Okay, so you should now know how covalent bonding works. If you don't um, and you haven't seen my previous video, then please do have a look at that. Because in this video, I just want to quickly and briefly cover giant covalent structures and why they are so different between simple covalent molecules. So a covalent molecule, covalent molecule, you can think of loads of examples of this, oxygen, uh, hydrogen, obviously water as well. They are simple molecules and the fact that they are so small, for example, oxygen only has two oxygen atoms in it, water has two hydrogens and an oxygen atom, and they're all covalently bound. The fact that they are so small means that they can buzz around independently and therefore it's easy for those to be separated and therefore that makes them liquids or gases. If you had a really long hydrocarbon, like for example, let's say C60H122, that would be an alkane and that would most likely be either a thick study liquid or it might even be a solid because there are so many carbons and hydrogens in there that you're going to have huge molecules and they are obviously going to be pretty close to other molecules as well. But even they are covalent molecules. What I want to talk to you about today is a giant covalent structure. So giant covalent structures. Okay? And the most simple example of this, or the most common example that we can think of, is diamond. So we all know what diamond is, and we should all know really that diamond is extremely hard. For us to break down diamond, it's going to require a huge amount of energy. And that's why diamond is able to withstand massive, massively high temperatures. And the fact that it's so hard also means that it can be used to cut through almost any other substance that we can think of. Now, diamond is actually made of carbon. Of carbon. So carbon is what makes up diamond. It's very different to something like an alkane or even to carbon dioxide. Okay, Carbon dioxide is CO2. Obviously, diamond is very different. In carbon dioxide, we have one carbon and two oxygens bound together in a molecule, and those molecules will independently buzz around. In diamond, we have millions and millions of carbon atoms all bound together and forming a crystal structure or a giant covalent structure. So, for example, if we said that this was a dime, a sorry, this was a carbon atom, this green dot here was a carbon atom. If we are looking at CO2, it will look something like this. Let's say that oxygen is going to be in a different colour, red, say. This is oxygen, this is oxygen, and you've got a double bond between them. So that would be carbon dioxide. You've got one, uh, one carbon there in the middle and an oxygen either side. And so if we were to have carbon dioxide gas, this is the sort of scenario that we get. We have these carbon dioxide molecules, they buzz around independently of each other, and the fact that they are able to move away, move around like this independently, that tells us that carbon dioxide is a gas, because these can buzz around and do exactly what they want. There's no set structure there. The carbon dioxide will just fit any container that it's in. And of course, that's where diamond is different. The structure of diamond is going to look something like this. So we have carbon atoms, and each carbon atom is going to be bound to another four carbons. So let's say this central carbon here, I'm going to draw the bonds in a different colour just so you can see the difference. Each one of these bonds is a covalent bond, and that is meant to be in 3D. So we have a carbon and it is bound to four other carbon atoms. And now this is not the molecule because each one of these carbon atoms is in turn also bound to another four carbon atoms. So for example, we have another one there, here, here, and here. This drawing is not perfect, but it will give you an idea. And so this carbon atom that we have here is bound to one, two, three, and so we have one, two, three, four carbon atoms bound there. We don't have this one because obviously we, we're already bound to this carbon up here. So this carbon is now bound to four. 
This carbon here is bound to one carbon there. So it's going to also be bound to three others. So one, two, three, four. And these are all covalent bonds as well. And you start to get a picture here of what's going to happen. You're going to have loads and loads of these carbon atoms all bound covalently to each other. And in order to melt down diamond, which is this structure, we are going to have to break down all of these bonds. All of these bonds are covalent because in order to melt this, each of these carbon atoms is going to have to move separately. Whereas if we take a look at our carbon dioxide, if we were to melt and then obviously boil carbon dioxide, all we need is the molecules to move around separately. Whereas in diamond, because all we have in there is carbon, we need to allow those carbons to be able to move freely. And so the bonds which are keeping these carbons together are the covalent bonds. In carbon dioxide, there are no covalent bonds between these molecules. And that is why carbon dioxide is a gas and diamond requires so much more energy in order to free up that carbon that it is going to be a solid. And so that is the major example really of a giant covalent structure. Another one, is graphite. Now graphite is also made of carbon. So we have graphite and that is made of carbon as well. But it does look slightly different to our diamond. What we have is we have a carbon atom and rather than being bound to four it is bound to three other carbon atoms. These are all covalent bonds. I'm going to draw them in the same colour as I did with diamond like this. And then each one of these carbon atoms is bound to three. So here we are going to have one, two, where we already came from, and then three. And so filling in our bonds, there we go, there we go. And what we end up with is a hexagon structure looking something like this. And we have our carbons all bound together in these hexagons. And then of course we're also going to have more hexagons, more hexagons, and they're all going to be bound together. And so we get this scenario forming. Not a perfect drawing, but you get the idea. We are, we are actually having these hexagon layers. Now because the hexagons are made from the carbons being bound to three other carbons, but we know carbon can actually form four bonds. Well, what has happened to the fourth bond? Well, the fourth bond actually doesn't exist we have electrons freely flowing throughout the substance. So just like in metallic bonding, we have electrons which can flow through the substance. And these hexagons form layers. And so we'll get a structure that might look something like this. So here we have two hexagons. One is above the other. This is meant to be in 3D. I never was an artist. But these purple lines here just show you that the top hexagon actually lies above the plane of the bottom hexagon. So we've got obviously space in between here. And what we'll have in that space, which I'll draw in red, is electrons. And so electrons can freely th flow sorry, through the substance. And that is why graphite behaves almost like a metal. Uh, it can conduct electricity because this is exactly the same as we see in uh, metallic bonding when we have free delocalized electrons. Also, graphite, you will know, is used in things like golf clubs, uh, and that allows it the, the whip on the golf club. That's because graphite can bend, because these hexagonal layers can actually run over each other. So if I bent this way, like this, I bent the graphite, this layer would move this way, and it would uh, slide over the layer below. And so that means that it can bend if we apply a force to it, and then it will snap back into its original shape eventually. And so that is the difference between graphite and carbon. They're, sorry, graphite and diamond. They both are made of carbon, but as we can see, whether you have three bonds or four bonds, like in diamond, that really dictates the properties of the structure. So graphite is weaker. Um, it's a lot softer because it, it only has these three bonds, and we have these layers which can freely slide over each other. Diamond, everything is really rigidly fixed in position, and so it takes way more energy to break it down, and it will not bend like graphite will. 
Okay, so that was a quick overview. Uh, if you do have any questions on that, please put them in the comments below or send me an email. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.